Whether you're getting fish for your very first aquarium or you're a seasoned veteran so advanced that you call yourself an aquarist, buying fish is the most fun part of this entire hobby. But it's a situation that can be absolutely glorious or it can be a disaster. So let me help you out with that by playing a little game of buying fish, true or false. Big box pet stores get their fish from bad suppliers and this is why their fish die so fast. I'm sorry folks, but this is false. It's time for a little story. If you're new to the channel, you may not be aware that Lisa and I used to own a fish store in King George, Virginia. Oh, and by the way, if you are new here, you gotta know that I was just told that all of our fish, all of them, we've got 18 tanks, they're all gonna die if you don't subscribe to the channel, so please, Please save our fish. Click that button down below, subscribe to the channel, and you can spare all of these fish from a horrible death. One of the things we had to do when we had our store was, well, we had to buy fish. We were lucky because we had access to quite a few suppliers, but we also got really lucky because one of those suppliers was only about 45 minutes away from us. And since we were so close, we could literally go there and hand select our fish. Well, we would go up there when we were told that they had just gotten a new shipment in, and guess what? All the other stores would be there too, and yes, that included buyers from PetSmart. So what does that tell you? Well, they were buying fish from the exact same place we were. And we always had people coming into our store saying, wow, you have such great fish. I'm just saying. Yeah, there's something to be said about how those fish are cared for after they get to the store, but the point of the dude's story is all these places are buying fish from the same farms and distributors. So don't automatically assume the place you're getting your fish has better fish than the big box stores. There's a real good chance they all came from the same place. Bagging and transporting fish is super stressful for them. This is true, but let's not get carried away. The first thing to think about is the fact that, except for the rare fish stores that breed their own fish, the fish you're buying have already been shipped. Otherwise, how do you think they got to your fish store? Most of the major fish farms are overseas, which means when they're shipped to your fish store, they're in bags for a while, sometimes up to a week. If they were in bags for a week and now they're in your fish store and they're perfectly fine, then you have nothing to worry about as far as them being in a bag for 20 minutes until they get to your home. Now with that being said, I totally understand it being stressful and you want to get them out of the bag as soon as possible. All I'm saying is don't rush this to a point where you make a mistake and it's not necessary to go completely overboard transporting your fish. When we had our store, we had people that would come from 30 minutes away to buy fish and they'd bring buckets with heaters in them and an air pump to run an air stone. While there's certainly nothing wrong with doing it that way, it is a bit overkill. Just take your time, don't be so stressed out, enjoy the process, and get the fish out of the bag as soon as you can. Have a little fun with it. Hey folks, I wanted to jump in here real quick and tell you about something devastating that's happened to a member of our community and tell you how you can help if you're interested. You're looking at photos that were sent to me from a member of the family that owns Aquarama Pet Center in Fayetteville, North Carolina. This store all of the equipment and inventory and 90% of the livestock perished in a fire a few weeks ago. Everything this family had worked for 42 years to build was gone in only two hours. And unfortunately, they didn't have the type of insurance that would have covered this kind of damage. Now is our opportunity to help this family out and get this business back up and running. Let's come together and donate whatever we can to the GoFundMe that's listed in the description. We've already donated, and it would mean a lot to Lisa and I if you could too. Doesn't have to be much, but 
every single dollar helps. Thanks for listening. Now let's get back to the video. Stores with recirculating systems are risky because if one fish is sick, they're all sick. Well, this is true, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to avoid buying fish from those places. If you're not familiar with what a recirculating system is, this is where all of the aquariums in the store are hooked up to the same filtration system. This means that all of the fish are sharing the exact same water because it's all recirculating. This also means that if one fish has a contagious disease, all of the other fish will be exposed to it and could possibly get that same disease. This kind of thing scares a lot of fish keepers and it makes them want to avoid stores with systems like this. But it doesn't have to be that way. One of the hot button words in fish keeping is quarantining, and this is a perfect scenario where quarantining makes total sense. Having a spare tank set up that you can put your new fish in for a while and monitor them can not only ensure that those fish are clean and free of disease, but it also eliminates the risk of infecting other fish. It doesn't matter if your local fish store or big box store has individually filtered tanks or recirculating systems, when you buy new fish and introduce them to your main tank with existing fish, you always run the risk of the new fish being sick and contaminating your current fish. If this risk is too much for you, just set up a quarantine tank. It doesn't have to be fancy. It can be a small tank underneath your cabinet or something. Who knows? Just have a small tank available for your new fish, and then you don't have to worry about it. You should have the fish store feed the fish before you buy them because if they have a big appetite, then that means they're healthy. This is true, but also false. Yes, it's true that a fish that aggressively goes after food is usually a sign of a healthy fish, but this certainly isn't guaranteed. There's more to look at than just the fish's appetite. You want to inspect their fins, make sure their eyes are clear, they don't have any redness around their gills and make sure there's no swelling or redness around their exhaust port. I'm sorry, this is a family friendly channel. I didn't want to say butthole. Anyway, just look at the fish's overall health and appearance and if they look good. They're active and energetic and you can get the store to feed them and everything checks out you should have the confidence to bring him home. But again, there's never any guarantee, so be careful. <sighs> Exhaust port. Yeah, that's, that's gonna give me nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> When you bring your new fish home, you should slowly drip water from your aquarium into your fish bag so that it can mix and the fish can get used to the water slowly before you put them into the tank. Oh, this is so fast. Okay, I'm not gonna go all scientific here when I'm explaining this, but here's the deal in a nutshell. Fish are constantly producing ammonia. They're producing it from their waist as well as their gills. Think of it just like humans. We inhale all kinds of good stuff and then we expel carbon dioxide. And well, <laughs> fish are the same way. They're breathing in oxygen from the water and constantly producing waste in the form of ammonia. That ammonia is building in the bag from the second the fish goes in it. This ammonia won't usually go to lethal levels in the bag, but the pH is also dropping and when you start slowly introducing water from your tank with a higher pH, it can cause that ammonia to spike to a lethal level. Seriously, how distraught would you be if you got everything all set up and you bring your fish home and you are doing what you think is the right thing to do by drip acclimating your fish. You walk away, you let it drip, you come back a half an hour later and the fish is dead. We had this happen when we were shipping African cichlids, even though we included a sheet with acclimation instructions, and the first line was, do not drip acclimate your fish. This customer did it anyway, cause you know, he was so much smarter than me, and yeah, the fish died. And also, guess who he blamed for that? Mm-hmm, it was me. 
He went on social media and blasted me saying my fish were weak and all of that other stuff. The bottom line is this, the water in the fish bag is disgusting, even if they've only been in there for an hour and you should absolutely not put this in your tank. Float the bag in your tank to get the temperature to even out, cut the top of the fish bag, pour the bag through a net so that it catches the fish and plop the fish only in the tank. Trust me, I know you think this is gonna be a huge shock for your fish, but it's gonna be a whole lot less of a shock than they're gonna deal with if you drip acclimate them. You should only buy fish from fish stores that inject pure oxygen into the bags or else the fish are gonna suffocate. F-A-L-S-E, false. Look, I get it, you see the fish in a sealed up bag and you feel bad for them and think that the fish stores that shoot pure oxygen into the bags are doing something really nice for the fish. And it's gonna help them breathe and have an easier trip to your home. I'm sorry, but this simply isn't true. Is there anything wrong with doing that? No, of course not. I'm just saying you don't have to stress over it because your fish are gonna be fine. John and I used to use oxygen in our fish bags when we were shipping big African cichlids. And it worked well because these fish were in the bags for a long time. And since a lot of our customers came from far away to buy from our store, we decided to do the same thing for walk-in customers. This was normal to me, so when we went to another fish store and bought fish and they didn't use oxygen, I was like, oh no. But guess what? The fish were fine and yours will be too. Listen, just enjoy the process and don't stress over things and overthink. So there you go. Hopefully you've gained a little bit more confidence now for when you set off to go and buy your next fish. Please folks, don't forget, I need your help to save all of my fish. They're all gonna die if you don't subscribe to the channel. So click that red button down there, it's free. Won't cost you anything and you'll be saving a whole lot of fish. I really am enjoying myself doing this series. I hope you are too. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.